Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another scripting tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get Sublime Text 3 set up for the Skyrim Creation Kit. You can also do this for Fallout 4, although I won't be covering that in this video. It's pretty much exactly the same process, so you'll see a bit later on where you need to make the changes for Fallout 4. So to get started, go ahead and make your way to the Sublime Text website, download the Windows 64-bit version. Uh, I wouldn't really bother with the portable version for modding, and it also comes with some slight differences with the file directory, so we're going to be heading for the 64-bit version. Of course, I've already gone ahead and downloaded that and got it installed. So what you'll need to do, once it's installed, load it up for the first time. You might get a few bits of mumbo-jumbo to go through, but then it should be good to go. You'll also notice at the top there that it says unregistered registered you can pretty much ignore this you might just get a prompt every month or so just to say please buy it and you'll ignore it and just use it for free anyway at least in the time of this video it's pretty much free software so once it's opened and you've gone through all the various bits and bobs if there are any I don't really remember you can go ahead and close it so we just need it loaded to do the initial sort of initialize initializing even uh, next thing you need to do is go to the Creation Kit Wiki, go to this section for Sublime Text Setup. I'll leave plenty of links down in the description below for things. And we're going to ignore steps three and four because it's old information for the old version, which we won't be using. And we're going to use this new bit of info. So I've already downloaded it and installed it. Then you want to click on this link here. This will take you to GitHub. We're going to scroll down to the installation section, click on release. And I'm going to download the zip folder for version 2.7.1. That seems to be the latest. And to be honest, judging on the date, it'll probably be the last. So I'll let that go ahead and download. Open that up in the folder. Should be pretty quick. I'm going to extract it to the same folder. And you'll see that we've got these two files here. So they are sublime text packages. And I'm going to go ahead and copy those. And then you want to navigate to where it's been installed. And in most people's cases, it's going to be the C drive users your username and then app data if app data doesn't show you will need to go ahead and view and click on hidden items so assuming that you're running windows 10 it's a bit more long-winded if you're on windows 7 but essentially you need to show hidden files and items so if i click that you'll see it disappears so make sure you've got those shown go to app data roaming scroll down and you should see sublime text 3 click into there Go into install packages and paste into there. And it's as easy as that for the initial setup. Next up, you want to go ahead, reload Sublime Text. And then go under preferences and settings. You should see that it opens up a new window. Just expand that. And having these two columns is going to be quite useful, although I will sort of get rid of one later on. And what you can do is just take what's default and make user settings. So essentially any settings that you put into the user section will overwrite those in the default section. And rather than me go ahead and type out a load of stuff that I already had, I'm just going to go ahead and copy my settings. So I'm going to navigate to where those are, which is back through here. Blime text 3 packages user and this is where it's going to start storing settings so i've actually got a backup on my desktop so if i just go ahead and grab those i'm going to first start with my main settings for sublime and it should update on the fly i'll also provide these as well as a download if you just want to pretty much copy my settings outright although there will be some changes in a moment to one of them so you'll see the settings that have appeared here are autocomplete with fields it says false it should be true uh, you'll see that come into action shortly and then i've got my color scheme and my theme i like to have the adaptive sublime theme so it's completely black along with the uh, monokai theme uh, which also makes it pretty nice so I've got that set. I can pretty much just do Control S, although I'm pretty sure it auto saves. You can then close that off. Next set of settings that we need is go into the preferences and key bindings. Now this is going to do the same thing, default and user settings. And what you need to do is place some other stuff in here. So again, I'm just going to make it easy on myself and copy my key mapping into here for my backup. And you'll see it's updated just the one and it's essentially changing the key bind to control shift and c for compiling that's what i use when i had notepad set, set up for it notepad plus plus but 
I went ahead and went to Sublime because it didn't have a dark theme and because Notepad++, the latest version, has issues with Papyrus compiling. So essentially I did Control shift and c You can make it whatever you like, whatever command you want for compiling scripts or building them, as you want to call it. Uh, I've set mine to that. And I've also set a nice macro on my keyboard so it's one tap away, which is really cool. So you've got that set up. Again, close that. Next one we need is the package settings, Sublime Papyrus and go to default. Now, when you click on this one, it doesn't do it automatically what it did with the others. So we want the default on the left, and then we want to go back through there and put the user on the right. And you'll need to copy and paste that across. But again, I'm going to make it easy on myself and my backup. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it across, and I will explain to you what is what. So I haven't really changed anything here, I don't think, but you can do things like font size, background color, text color. You can pretty much make it whatever you want really which is really cool but the main thing that we care about is this section here for Skyrim and you've also got the Fallout 4 se section there if you want to do Fallout 4 so I'm just going to drag this along so I can see all of this and essentially you need to state the directories that various bits and bobs are at so where is the compiler in this case it's on my G drive for yourself it will probably be a different drive and it's always going to be under, at least if it's properly installed on Steam, uh, the Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Papyrus Compiler, um, Papyrus Compiler Executable. So essentially just navigate to your Skyrim folder, your main directory, which I hope you know where that is if you're looking to start scripting stuff. And then you will go into Papyrus Compiler and you will see the Papyrus Compiler Executable. So the good way of doing it is just click up here, copy this path, paste it into there, and then just add an additional backslash and papyruscompiler.exe and it should navigate straight to it and you'll need to do the same for your scripts folder and your source folder so that will be through the data folder which again I hope you know where that is if you're looking to do scripting and you're just going to do what your output folder is which is usually scripts where scripts are and your import which is essentially the source code so yeah you'll set those up and then you can do the same for Fallout 4 as well which will be a somewhat similar similar thing and make sure that these are backslashes because if you do forward slashes they're not going to work and that will make sure that that is all set up correctly now we can go ahead and close those and what i will do is actually load up a script so i'll just go with one of my own i usually open a cat's life script so let's go with the cat bed one and you can see that what it does, it starts to have everything multicolored, so it's really nice, and it's essentially using the Papyrus language. If it isn't, you might have to change a setting to just tell it that it's Papyrus. You'll see down in the bottom right here, it says that it's Papyrus Skyrim, and you can kind of state what the language is. I actually forget exactly where it is. But it's not too difficult to find. And what will happen now is if you use your shortcut, in my case I use my macro, you'll see it comes up with the, the console here, and it says one succeeded nor failed it will give you all the same error codes if you've got an error in your script and it will essentially do the compiling for you um, by default i believe it's control and b but with those key binding settings you can change it to whatever you like essentially for compiling and if you also go ahead and start typing things in it will even do the auto filling so it just makes life a little bit easier which is really really good so you don't have to type everything out all of the while Okay, so if you're really, really picky about theming and visuals and a couple of other things, uh, you can go ahead and watch this section of the video. Uh, I'm going to change a few things uh, that I found annoying that are pretty easy to change. So first off is this layout. I do not like having two columns. Uh, the only reason I'd want this is if I've got two scripts that I'm sort of doing comparisons on or stealing bits from an old script and putting them into a new. Uh, if you don't need this then you can go under view, layout and set it to single. You'll see there's also hotkeys and if you're lucky enough to have some macros on a keyboard you can set those up. I might do that later, uh, but I like to have single by default and then add an extra one if I need to. And you can still have tabs anyway that you can switch between. So that's a pretty neat thing to set up. Um, the other thing is the theme, which if you copy my settings across, you'll get automatically applied. But if you go to preferences and theme, you can select which one you want. And then you can also do the color scheme, which allows you to change that if it lets me. There we go. So you'll see you've got options for color schemes as well is really really useful and the other thing is the menu uh, everything is nice and dark and black however 
I've got this horrible white bar at the top, which is obviously a useful menu, but you can actually hide it. So view, hide menu, and if you need to get back to the menu to change anything that you realize you need to change, then fear not, you can hit Control, Shift and P, and you can essentially search for toggle menu, and it will reappear if you click on that. But yeah, I like to have that hidden, so everything is completely dark and completely awesome. And that's pretty much it. That's all the little tweaks that I've got for you there. And that is it from the tutorial video, so I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.